Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Jacksonville History Show. I'm Harry Reagan. Tonight, later on, a preview of the Riverside Avondale home tour. But first, the great Jacksonville fire. Jacksonville burned down 110 years ago. And we're here to talk about that uh, historic event. With us is uh, Emily Liska, Executive Director of the Jacksonville Historical Society, and Wyatt Taylor, Curator and Administrator of the Jacksonville Fire Museum. Welcome, both of you. Thanks, Thanks for having me. Uh, generally regarded, Emily, as uh, the biggest moment in Jacksonville history, I guess. Uh, I call it that. When the city burned down. I would, I would. I say most historians agree. Uh, the most singularly important event in our city's history is, of course, the Great Fire 1901, May 3rd of 1901, so uh, rapidly approaching that mm -hmm. 110th anniversary. Others would say consolidation is a close second. and. And it's, so it's, it's a debatable issue, but among historians, we usually uh, uh, err on the side if it's an error. But but consolidation uh, is something we celebrate, and the fire is something we uh, commemorate, yeah, I guess. Yeah, that's, that's correct. Yes. And uh, Wyatt, uh, the Fire Museum uh, is a museum of firefighting history and so forth. Yes, sir. And some of the uh, paraphernalia that was used to fight the Great Fire 110 years ago can be seen. That's yeah. right. It's really a tangible link. Uh, not only do we have firefighting apparatus that was uh, used in the Great Fire, we also, the three of the four walls of the building were actually built using brick salvage from the Great Fire. So a living link to the Great Fire of 1901. And that uh, museum was moved. It, from, was. Uh, it, it's, it was known as Catherine Street. Fire correct. Station. It was known as the Catherine Street Fire Station. Because um, it was on Catherine Street. Correct. It, was, uh, found, it started as a museum in 1982. It was moved in 1993. In one piece, the entire building was moved to its current home on Gatorville Boulevard, uh, right adjacent mm -hmm. to Kids Campus and Metro Park. And it's a great place for uh, particularly kids. Really kids enjoy love it. it. They really do. Yeah. The kids get a kick out of it. It's it's a wonderful experience for me to to see how the kids react because every kid you know wants to be a firefighter and they really get a kick out of seeing all the all the artifacts that we have there that celebrate the history of firefighting in Jacksonville. Emily, let's take a look at some of the photos. Uh, of the Great Fire, and uh, this one shows uh, the fire in progress. How did it start? Well, the fire actually started around noontime on a Friday, uh, and it had been very hot and dry. And the fire itself started at the Cleveland Fiber Factory in an adjoining moss bed. And this moss bed, the Spanish moss was drying in the sun, and this was... Uh, Which they, they used to stuff mattresses. Stuff mattress, mattress, yeah. mattress stuffing, that's correct. Because uh, Spanish moss, you know, you kill off the red bugs yeah. and produce this wonderful <laughs> silken fiber. Preferably. It was a great export for Jacksonville, Florida, mm -hmm. by the way. But nonetheless, an ember from a nearby shanty landed in some of the drying moss. Uh, and this was not unusual. Workers got up with buckets of water nearby, d did what they thought was dousing it out. But when they looked again, this unusual wind had begun to blow easterly and this wind would then blow the flames from the moss bed into the, uh, the Cleveland Fiber Factory. The factory would go up in an explosive torrent because you had more Spanish moss, bird feathers, horse hair, cotton, all in this, uh, all in this wood uh, factory. And that, those flames would blow around the town. And uh, although this kind of fire would start occasionally, one of the unusual things, if I'm not mistaken, is the prevailing winds were blowing in, I guess you would say, the wrong direction and, and blowing the to fire the back toward the city of That's Jackson. That's correct. It started way west of town in what we recognize today across the street from the Villa Museum uh, and it would, would make a march almost two miles uh, to the east and uh, roughly a mile wide. What you, b before this, uh, this, this shows what the city looked like after the mm -hmm. fire, just utter devastation. It was total devastation. And you're talking about yeah. 466 acres, uh, more than 148 city blocks. Uh, we lost every single government building. That includes all, includes all the schools and uh, except the post office and uh, federal courthouse, and that was a single building. Mm -hmm. And uh, by the way, uh, Old St. Andrews, headquarters of the Jacksonville Historical Society, uh, was spared. 
uh, it, it was on the uh, other side of Hogan's Creek. Just in fact, that first image that you showed at the very beginning is this iconic image of the Great Fire, people running across the Hogan Street viaduct. That was mm -hmm. earlier. And just the other side of that was old, well, St. Andrew's Church. Only major church spared the fire. Now you're looking at more devastation from mm -hmm. the Great Fire. I believe that is the old courthouse, and it was said to have fireproof walls. Well, you see what happened there. You know, our city was a smoldering and, mass for days. And Wyatt said before we started uh, taping that uh, it, some of these shots look a little bit like uh, European uh, cities uh, oh. after World War II. Oh, absolutely. It was, it was utter devastation. Harry, it is the third largest metropolitan fire in our nation's history. So that's something to reflect on. So uh, in, in terms of uh, major disasters in uh, cities, along with the San Francisco earthquake and the Chicago fire. That's right. We're third. Yeah. And, and it was, I mean, admittedly, much smaller than those two fires, but indeed the largest after those fires. And the largest in the American South. Yes, in the South, you're exactly right. And uh, I'll, hold, I'll hold this one up because it wants to fall off. But uh, this is another shot of uh, afterward. And this is a famous picture. It is indeed. The, the mayor. It was. The mayor of our town at the time, known affectionately as Jet Bowden. That, those were his initials, J-E-T. A lot of the populace called him just easy times Bowden for those initials. And uh, he is standing there, uh, an imposing figure you can see, but equally so is that unfortunate stogie in his mouth looking at the ruins from the fire. Mm -hmm. And I think you said you have that photo, and many of these we're showing today on display at the fire museum, right? That's correct. Right. Yes, we do have a, a collection of photos from the Great Fire, and this one is definitely iconic. And I like to point out, you can see some of the bricks around the mayor's feet, and some of those very bricks could have been used to build the uh, fire station number three where the museum is housed now. So uh, it would be interesting to uh, remember that uh, there were not a lot of fatalities. Not, no. And no. Uh, you, you would think maybe when a city gets wiped out, but people did manage to evacuate. No yeah. firefighters were lost at all, only seven citizens, no children. Two of the citizens who died in the fire uh, went back into their homes you know, or, or were refusing to leave. Three others died at the waterfront. So this, uh, and oh, I'm like, no, let's see, I, I, I did that a little wrong. My math is poor. <laughs> let's see, four at the waterfront, I believe. Five at the waterfront and two in their homes, as I recall. I think, I, I think yes, that's right. Yes. And, and one of those that you said went back is a very interesting story about Mr. Bonifo, if I'm that's pronouncing right. it right. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Who's, yes. um, he went back to save a portrait, and his father actually was a famous miniaturist, painted miniature portraits, who I think there are 14 or 18 in the mm -hmm. Smithsonian Institute today. And that, to me, is one of the most interesting things about the fire, all the stories. The, the stories are wonderful. And in fact, uh, I'll, 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 I'll up your ante and do you one better. <laughs> we have one of those uh, paintings that Mr. Bonifu went back I for. heard that. That's amazing. We do indeed, indeed. And people can see it when they're on tour at the Merrill Museum House. And uh, you see the burn holes in the canvas uh, where the embers, of course, fell into the painting. Uh, and it was such a sad, it's a sad story, it but it was lovely to have that, that painting. Uh, that and speaking yeah. of stories, uh, th this book, published by the Jacksonville Historical Society, is full of great stories about this historic event. And we still have copies. Oh, we have copies. We, we made sure we'd have enough available when we published it for the centennial that we'd still have some left for the under and tenth anniversary. Indeed, we do. So people could contact the Jacksonville Historical Society to get a copy of that. And Wyatt was talking about how much he loved the personal stories from the fire. And the very last chapter in that book highlights the stories of 60 people, and it's called Voices from the Flames. And, and they're just magnificent accounts it's of a the great wonderful, fire. It's a wonderful chapter, it really is. Now, it's not uh, in any way criticism of the fire uh, of the time, <laughs> but it was just a, a lost cause. There was no way to put the fire out. It just wiped out the, the city. Yeah, I mean, you, you, everyone in there talks about the fire almost being an entity, like they call it a malevolent wind and the beast. And there are a lot of eyewitnesses that said no human endeavor could have saved the city from that yeah. fire. It really was, it was Even a firestorm. Uh, now, modern day firefighting equipment, maybe, but, uh, but in those days, uh, it, it was pretty uh, primitive equipment. That's correct. And this is how important firefighting was to a city back in those days. 
We paid our chief of the fire department double what we paid our mayor really? back in 1901. So that tells you what people thought about fire. So after the fire, uh, a lot of people were homeless. And, uh, and th this next photo we're going to take a look at shows, uh, I guess there were tent cities in various parts of the area for people to live in. Absolutely, right down in Hemming Park as people mm -hmm. see, see it today, what is across the street from uh, City Hall. The federal government was rushing 10,000 tents to the city of Jacksonville as the town burned to the ground. The people already knew the gravity of this uh, event. And it was so, uh, th as the book points out, uh, you could see the fire from Miami and Savannah. Uh, Indeed, it just lit below, up the sky. The smoke could be seen all the way up to North Carolina. Yeah. One account that I found interesting was that they said they could read the, their evening news by the light in Savannah by the light of the fire. And, and speaking of accounts, uh, of course, uh, there was no electricity after this occurrence. And, and uh, the, uh, the, the Florida Times Union pulled their old crank presses, which they still owned, out of their building, did not burn, pulled it out. They were able to hand crank out a newspaper. That's why we have an account the next morning. And they did it by candlelight. And then they loaned their hand crank presses to their competitor, the Metropolis. So we have two newspapers uh, and their accounts the next day, after, the day after the fire. Amazing. That, that speaks to the commitment by the city mm -hmm. of Jacksonville to rebuild. There really yeah. was a prevailing spirit of, yeah. of a commitment to rebuild. Monday, the following Monday, there was a permit issued right. for a new building. Mm -hmm. And there the, was no the rebuilding the is city. a major story all by itself. It yeah. is indeed. Uh, within roughly two years after the fire, uh, we lost 2,368 buildings and homes in the fire. And within two years, we had added 3,000 buildings to our town. And uh, one of the historic figures in Jacksonville history read about the fire and decided this was an interesting place to come rebuild a city. And uh, Mr. Clouseau. That's right, Henry John uh, Clouseau. Uh, you know, he, he, as an architect, he realized this was a golden opportunity, I guess. You know, the, the idea for someone who considers himself an artist, and he was indeed, Henry Clouseau, to build a city on this clean canvas and that's what he did and of course he was a very interesting man and he brought us some of our most visionary and uh, buildings uh, many sadly we've torn down but many we've preserved mm -hmm. and uh, his his real uh, masterpiece would have to be uh, City Hall downtown which was once the Cohen Brothers department store mm -hmm that wonderful Prairie School masterpiece. And of course, there are so many others by Henry Clutho. Now, uh, before we uh, finish this segment, why we need to plug the Fire Museum. I appreciate that. <laughs> and, le and let you explain to people how they can come see it, and particularly uh, groups of children. Sure, sure. Uh, the Fire Museum is open. It's free to the public. It's open Monday through Friday from 9 to 4. We just ask if you'd like to schedule a tour, particularly a school or anything like that, that you give us a call to make sure we can schedule a time period to devote the requisite attention to, to that mm -hmm. tour. But Anytime, Monday through Friday, 9 to 4, feel free to stop by, and we'd and, love to have you. And it's a great uh, opportunity to see uh, some of Jacksonville's history. That's right, and, and like you said, the fire, the Great Fire of 1901, really is a, sem a seminal moment in Jackson Jacksonville history, mm -hmm. and the Fire Museum celebrates that event. So it's a great place to see the, the rich and storied history of Jacksonville, which not enough people know mm -hmm. about. Wyatt Taylor, Emily Liska, thank you for being with us on the Jacksonville History Show. Emily will be here, right, sitting here in a moment. So stay with us. The Jacksonville History Show continues. The Jacksonville Historical Society, preserving your city's history, protecting your city's treasures, advocating the restoration of Jacksonville landmarks, archiving a century of historians, collecting rare photographs, tens of thousands, creating the Merrill Museum House, piece by piece, Restoring Old St. Andrew's Church. Receiving Florida Historical Society's top honors. Publishing historical books. Elegantly crafted. Producing video histories. Dramatically told. Educating our citizens for decades. Enlightening the generations to come. Sponsoring tonight's special television television presentation. And offering you the opportunity to become a part of Jacksonville history. Call 665-0064, visit jackshistory.com, and become a member of the Jacksonville Historical Society, celebrating 80 years serving our community. 